What I'm going to try to do tonight is, like I said, a continuation, just going in. I'm not going to go over the same things, but try to just uh, hit on some of the other ones. And then we'll have some time later on to maybe do a little more uh, question and answer. Okay. So we're going to start off. Um, we talked a lot last time about the minerals, and I uh, didn't bring this in. Um, this is like a liquid uh, vitamin mineral. This has the same minerals that are in this big bottle that we talked about. Remember the trace minerals as well as the four big minerals, magnesium, potassium, calcium, and sodium. And we want those in balance, but we need the trace minerals to go with it. So this has, I think they tout this as having like 90 mineral vitamins in there. So it's one of those products, if you didn't need specifics, this would be one of those multivitamin mineral. Now one thing I do like to tell people, uh, I would never use this first because my favorite thing is green food, but it's made with things like barley and alfalfa and a lot of people, it tastes like grass. <laughs> Most people don't want to take grass. But that's what we, this would be. But it is actually probably the most potent thing. If you want a good so-called multivitamin mineral, it would be the green food. We have had people take the green food, and within a week, uh, their fingernails start growing, their hair starts growing thicker. It only takes about a week to really notice a difference. So this is what you would want if you're really into healthy and you don't mind the taste. <laughs> we take this, it's like a green powder, and you put it in... You can put it in juice or water, either one. And we use a tablespoon, um, pretty much a tablespoon a day of this. But there, then you have children and people who just can't stand the taste thing. This would be the second my, uh, alternative to this, okay? And this would have not like something 90 minerals, vitamins in it. It's a complete um, product. Uh, sometimes people look at products like this and they say, wow, those are expensive. Well, let me tell you, if you go to Walmart or somewhere like that and you're paying $15 for something, you're probably not getting much of anything because you usually need to, uh, in a ballpark of a dollar a day for a good multivitamin mineral. Now, everybody doesn't need that. If you're eating well and you're healthy, you don't maybe need that much. Uh, even like the green food, I have people that have been on it for a while or even something like this. Want the dose is a cap full a day. But if you've been, you know, using it a while and you feel good and you feel pretty healthy, you don't need a capful. Maybe you only need a quarter capful a day. And the same with the green food, maybe going down to a teaspoon a day. So there you can cut back, and this is going to last you a little bit while. But uh, when you start off and you're starting to really get on uh, in line with this kind of healthy living and you don't have good minerals, you're going to spend about a dollar a day. So that's what you should use as a um, guideline to start off, okay? Does anybody have any questions about that? This is kind of, you don't always need these starting off though. And some people say, well, I want a good mineral. But sometimes you need the single things to help fix things first. <laughs> these are getting your body, once they're maintained, to get on these and get some healthy things in your body, okay? So these would be the op options. Um, there are a lot of other ones. I like these, let me say two, because this is going to be liquid when you make it, and this is liquid too. So you have the benefit of getting it right in your system. Sometimes if you're using especially hard caplets and things like that, your body's probably not going to dissolve those, so you're not going to get any benefit anything. Anyway, uh, I guess if you weren't doing this, then you would want to look for like those gel caps, the things you can break open. They're going to dissolve in your uh, stomach or your intestines, but things that are hard and crust probably are not going to even dissolve. So you're not getting any benefit of. I like liquid is my favorite or gel caps at the uh, least. I know we talked last time, we said one of our favorite things is vitamin C. That's an immune booster and that helps us uh, for reactions, um, just get our um, immune system beefed up. But you have to use a lot. You can't just use like 500 milligrams a day. That's probably not going to really help a lot. You're using two, 3,000 a day, especially if you're treating something. But we do have another product, and I didn't remember if I uh, used this or not. Uh, it's called Ekamer. Uh, this is made from shark oil. It has some 
a detoxification properties, but this is my high powered immune booster. If you come in and your spleen's stressed and your immune system's stressed, or if you have, uh, now we talk about autoimmune and we don't diagnose, but if you have what we call autoimmune, the doctors say, well, we got to shut down your immune system. Well, we have to fix a few things, but technically in the end, we want to get your immune system beefed up again. We take down the reaction, but we want to get it back up to where it needs to be. And this is the one we usually use when we need, what I say, a high-powered immune booster. Um, so this is a timing thing, of course. Don't think that, okay, I'm going to give myself some of that ecomer <laughs> if you have autoimmune, because then you might have some problems. But this is a high-powered immune booster if you are looking and needing that. Um, last time I talked about charcoal, I thought I'd talk about that again because I don't think we had some last time. Um, my daughter Karina is an herbalist. Uh, for those of you who knew, I should have said this. I'm a homeopath, so I don't use a lot of herbs, essential oils. They are in my office and there is a place for those, but I'm trying to do more energy medicine or uh, homeopathy. But my daughter is a master herbalist and she's putting together more products these days. And one thing we found, <coughs> Charcoal is key. If um, I think everybody should have charcoal in their home because charcoal is good if you have food poisoning. Uh, of course, if you've ever had food poisoning, it's horrible. <laughs> and you're in agony sometimes two, three, four, five days. With charcoal, usually if you get it in your system, it's going to bind up that uh, bacteria is usually what it's involved. And sometimes it's a day, it's out of your system. Also, if you ever have like a, um, a viral infection that is more stomach, you know, gut related, this is good too because that's usually a virus or uh, bacteria in your stomach or intestines. And if you can bind it up and get it out, then you're going to feel a whole lot better quicker. <laughs> so charcoal is one of those. Two, if you have kids, if for any reason somebody would swallow anything that shouldn't, they shouldn't swallow. Uh, even the medical community now is advocating, you know, usually they used to try to have you throw up. Now they're saying that's probably not the better thing because if it's something that's going to burn your esophagus or something coming back up, so what they're saying more, it's better to bind it up and to get it out that way. Uh, and they're even using that uh, in hospitals and not even on ambulances for charcoal more than trying to have people throw up like they used to do. Pardon? I said, what do you know? It took a while. <laughs> um, we talked about this last time too, but I, again, it's so powerful. I, this is one of these, this is called relief. And um, I want to tell a story just because I told, I told how powerful it was. And something happened this last month that re really made me, again, very sad. And I hope it will, um, you know, just help you to maybe pray harder. Uh, I told you about this formula we got that was helping people, especially with joints. And we got it originally. I got it because I buy everything that comes along that's for joints, again, for my mom. Because she has joint things, and so I try everything. <laughs> and we got this product, and we've used glucosamine, we've used MSM, we've jo done, like, joint stuff for years and years. And she gets some relief, but she still has issues. Well, we got this product came across my desk, I bought some, gave it to her, and within 48 hours, actually I think it was more like 24, she calls me and she says, I don't know what's in this, but my stiffness was basically a gone. The pain was brought so low. And so I was like so excited, I got and I bought some more. The only thing was, it was like 30 pills for 50 bucks. And I'm thinking, that's a lot of money for a few pills. So again, I turned to my daughter, I said, we need to get the ingredients, we need to try to get this ourselves. She started putting it together. We didn't, weren't able to get two of the herbs that are in it. Most of the things in it are pretty common, same thing, glucosamine, but something about the formulation was so powerful. We started experimenting. What we got, she formulated capsules. It worked pretty good for most people, but some people were saying maybe it's not working as well. She also formulated the liquid. Well, in the meantime, we, this, the company that actually uh, formulated the first one, which they were, they couldn't keep this stuff because it was acting on everybody across the country. Where people were like, this is a miracle for people with joint issues. 
some, at some point during this month, the FDA came in and told them they couldn't formulate this. Now, I still haven't talked to them personally to see why they had a problem. Now, I say it's probably because it was working. <laughs> but they told them they had to reformulate it and probably take something out. And, of course, it's not working as well as it was. And, you know, it's like this, what they had put together was so powerful for people, basically pain-free joints and stuff, and yet, you know, they told them they couldn't do it anymore. And I look at the formula, and I'm like, what's there that they said they couldn't put in it, or what was the formula? They just, you know, who knows? Because there's nothing there. There's a few herbs, there's glucosamine, charcoal, all these things are common things. They're not medicines, you know. And so I still haven't got the final answer, but they had to reformulate. And they don't even have it right now because they said we can't get a formulation that's working like the original thing. So once again, I mean, it's just discouraging sometimes because we don't understand what is happening. Why don't they want people to feel better? But we do, we don't have the original formulation because like I said, four or two herbs we couldn't find. But people with joints, now it's an anti-inflammatory, it doesn't seem to work as good for just general inflammation, but it seems to uh, work pretty good with people with joint issues, um, inflammation that is, um, you know, stiffness and pain for joints and things. So we have this, we're going to hopefully keep carrying it. It's not exactly what it is, but again, for what we've seen, it's pretty powerful. Uh, and, like I said, the things that are in it, you're thinking, oh, we've been using these things for years, but something about this combination is pretty powerful. And I have some people that are ordering it weekly, <laughs> giving it to all their friends. So I do bring this up again. But if you have people, it, it's maybe worth uh, trying. Because I know people that have the stiffness. I mean, they get up in the morning. It takes them a half an hour to an hour just to get out of bed and get moving. But it, it, it is a trial because it doesn't work for everybody. But when it works, it works well. I have somebody, I can't even remember who it was. I don't think it was anybody here, but um, another story. Um, the wife had bought some, or got it from one of my clients, and um, her husband got up one day, and she was sitting there, and he was just bebopping her back and forth, and she's like, how can you be, you know, usually stiff, and <laughs> and he's like running around, she's like, how, how are you doing so good? And he said, oh, I've been taking your pills. <laughs> and he, she didn't know, and he didn't tell her, but she noticed how good he was doing, and he wasn't stiff, and he wasn't, you know, bent over, and so <laughs> even not knowing, but that was another one of those fun stories we had, that uh, he'd start taking her pills. <laughs> okay, here's another one we have. Um, I, Dr. Schultz, did I tell you about him last time? Uh, his website is, I think, was, I don't know if it's on there, it's HerbDoc, H-E-R-B-D-O-C dot com. Uh, his name is Dr. Schultz. He uh, is a naturopath. He studied with Dr. Jensen, who was one of the uh, most uh, famous herbalists pretty much of all time. But he was out in California, and they kept coming in. He was so, um, he helped so many people, they kept shutting him down. I mean, they come in. And they say, well, you got that door isn't right. And that they'd shut him down. And they'd you know, come in and say, those windows are right. I mean, they weren't even for what he was doing. But they were just shutting him down because he was so powerful. Well, finally, he said, I'm not doing this anymore. He just closed his practice. And he started selling uh, the formulas that he had. And he wasn't just into money. People bought it. But he, because it was so powerful, on his website, he gives the formulations. And they're not hard. Uh, so they, they're out there. Most people are going to buy from him, of course. They're not going to do that. But we were able to get his formulations because he gives them to anybody that wants them. One that we use is his colon cleanse. It's a formula one and a formula two. And using it as a colon cleanse, uh, you use them together. This one, it acts on the colon to, uh, hopefully, if you have constipation issues, this helps to make you regular. The uh, second part is more like a charcoal bentonite clay formula, which again is going to collect up all the old fecal matter. And if you can imagine, kind of like your water pipes, okay, you can still have your colon working, but if there's old stuff like on your water pipes, water still comes through, but the corrosion on the edges doesn't allow things to come through as well. Well, it's the same in our colon. But in not, unlike our water pipes, though, our colon has the toxins that are get stuck. And so to really get cleaned out, 
you got to get all that old stuff off the side so your colon is clean. And that's what this does. It works like kind of like a magnet, just kind of pulls everything out from the edges. Uh, we also have, uh, some people call them diverticulitis. Um, it's not technically that, but it's diverticuli, those little pockets that if you've ever seen, I should have a picture, but they get kind of pockets exterior of your colon. And that's what collects that too. Well, this is even powerful enough to pull that out of there, get those that old stuff out, and this pulls it out. The only thing you have to be careful is this will slow things down, so then you have to use this to make things continue to work because we don't want to plug up anything in the process because this will plug up if it's not moving out. But these two products, I have used probably four or five different colon cleanses. Um, some, it takes a month or more to do. Actually, if you want to use this as quickly as he recommends, you can do this in about a week. And it's basically, you don't eat a whole lot because you're taking a lot of things. You take uh, like five capsules five times a day, and you're using this, um, or excuse me, not capsules, this is powder. You, you put it in water. Okay? So this works in the evening. This works all day. And um, it's in water. Um, so you use it five times a day, and within a week you can be done. Other formulas sometimes take a month. They are slow acting, and they don't always work as well. So again, if you want high powered stuff, this is powerful and it's quick because it doesn't. And I've tried, like I said, four or five different formulas and nothing even begins to touch this formula. And it's Dr. Schultz's original formula, but Karina's uh, been making this, so it's a uh, colon cleanse, part one and part two. We do have people that just buy this for uh, constipation too, and it, uh, as an herbal, it's very good for that because you can't really take too much of this by itself. Uh, I did talk a little bit, I think, last time about what, again, Dr. Schultz's formula called Snuff. <laughs> We've changed the name to Sinus Clear. <laughs> it's got a little better name, but this is for. Uh, if you've ever had congestion, and we have some people that have chronic congestion in their sinuses and they just never can clear it out. Uh, this power, uh, powder, it does have golden steel, that's the, one of the key ingredients it has, but it also has cayenne, so <laughs> it can be a little hot. Um, but basically you just take a pinch and you suck it up, suck it up your nose and you'll probably start sneezing and uh, it'll start breaking things up. The way I've used it in the winter time when you get that congestion, I use it first, the first time and it starts coming out. Then I'll apply it a second time. I usually like to do it in the evening. So then when you get it in and you can keep it in here, then you sleep with it. And then by the next morning, all that congestion is really getting broken up. And so this is what we call sinus clear. It doesn't have a lot, but I've had a little, uh, just a little tin of it. And uh, golden seal, if you don't know, is very expensive. It's uh, quite expensive, and that's what one of the main greens is. But you would have this much. It looks like nothing. You'll probably have this much forever, <laughs> unless you have a chronic issue that you have to use it a lot. But you'll have this forever. You'll have this is one of those things you'll pass on your kids and grandkids. Because <laughs> it's not, I mean, this will just go forever. And it, it's very powerful. So if anybody has any issues, I, this is a, one of those things that I probably would not be without just because when you get that congestion, it's like, ah, what do I do? So you want it on hand. You don't want to have to go hunt for it uh, when you can't breathe, when you're laying down and you have to sit up and all that. But this is very powerful. This too is Dr. Um, Schultz's formulation. Okay. Um, we have a few of the herbals my daughter does make. We are selective only because in our practice, we use homeopathics a lot, but there's certain things that we need to use herbals for. And so we found things that work for us, and we, we just keep it to those few. We're not doing the gamut, because there's, again, hundreds of herbals you can use. Uh, and we do be, are careful because um, there's certain herbals you want to be careful you don't want to use them together, because they can be powerful. Uh, and I'll go back to the thing, herbals are chemical. They're in the same area as medicines. You know, they're chemical. They're going to act on your body. A little bit does one thing, a lot does more. You can't just put not. People think, oh, herbals, you can just use them and they're not going to hurt you. That's not true. There are herbals that can hurt you. So you've got to be selective. Unlike homeopathics, 
Now, homeopathics, you can't really hurt yourself too much because it's a whole different concept. It's a communicating something to your body to get it to start doing something it's not or stop doing something it is. And you can't really hurt yourself. But herbals are not in that world. They're in the chemical world. So um, we just want to be careful with that. But there are a few that we use in our office and we can recommend them for first aid. One of the first ones, again, I like this one, it's called lobelia. And it acts on the lungs and the bronchial tubes and even the sinuses. Um, when we have, uh, especially we like kids, getting that congestion, we want to break it up. Uh, this is where, you know, sometimes when kids get coughs, people run to the drugstore and they want to get something to stop the cough. But the cough is the body's way of getting rid of the gunk that's in there. So, and I know it's hard when you're up all night with the kids and stuff, or you're up coughing and thinking, i got to go to sleep. Well, I still say be careful because it's not wanting to shut that down because if there's stuff in there, you want to get it out. Um, and lobelia will do that. It's like a decongestant kind of. Um, I, usually, I never thought to do this, but I just did it here recently. <laughs> Um, we usually use, we can take it internally, and if when you take it, I, th I feel it doesn't taste good, but it gives you that peppermint patty feeling. Have you <laughs> when you eat peppermint, you're like, you're like, like that. <laughs> That's what this can do. It kind of feels that way. But, you know, again, kids aren't going to like this because it tastes horrible. So, but you can use herbals externally. So you can put it here on these lung points. You can run it down the sternum just to help open up. Or on kids, if you have a lot of congestion, you can run it down the sides on the back, down your lung points. That would go all the way down the sides, okay? Or just all over the back, it's not gonna hurt. And it will really act the same. Now what I did is we were having some stuff going on in our house. I said, well, how about if I just put it in a spray bottle? <laughs> I go, had a little spray bottle, we like using spray bottles, uh, we just get bottles from like Walmart and them. So I put it straight into a spray bottle and it was easy because then I could go around and squirt people, you know, <laughs> pull your shirt down, I'm going to spray it. <laughs> and just sprayed it right here. And plus you could spray it on their face and they're going to breathe it up too. So it was a misting instead of having to do the big bottle thing. But you could do that um, even if you bought some. And again, this goes a long way. You're not going to have to buy. It seems to be a little bottle, but you're not going to use a lot because it's a few drops are going to do what you need. But lobelia, especially as we're coming into the winter, is a good thing to have. And uh, I think what we've seen, there's been a flu already kind of going around, and it's been more uh, congestion uh, in that. I I'm always nervous about the congestion. You know, if somebody's got you know, a runny nose and stomach aches, I'm like, ah, oh, your flu, go to bed. <laughs> but when you, especially with kids, and you start hearing that heaviness in their breathing and that, you know, that can turn bad really fast. It can turn into pneumonia. And I said, even with my kids, I'm not too anxious too often, but even with older kids, I, when they start having that heavy breathing, I'm thinking, okay, we need to move on this quickly. So that's why I started using the lobelia. I started spraying it on people. Come on, we're spraying everybody. <laughs> But um, as we get into this season, when more colds, respiratory is going to show up, and the healing is very powerful. Um, let me go a little quicker here. I know I like to talk about some of these, but I need to go faster or we'll be missing out. Um, two things that I've found that work for parasites. Um, people don't like to talk about parasites, but pretty much everybody has some, whether it comes from our food, if we have animals in our house, you're probably going to have them. If you do go barefoot, like I do, <laughs> um, you're going to pick them up through your feet, different kinds of parasites. Uh, parasites, basically, there's what I say parasites. There's amoebas, there's worms, and there's flukes, okay? The worms are those bigger ones. <laughs> it's not fun to talk about them. The worms are usually the bigger ones. Flukes are bigger, too. The flukes are usually deep-seated in the liver in the intestines, they're a little bit harder to get rid of. But uh, two formulas, we have uh, black walnut and we use cat's claw. Uh, sometimes they call this cemento too, but these have been very powerful. I've had people that just come in that hate to say it, are almost infested from top to bottom. Um, I had one man who came at one time who had, uh, he's been a restaurant business, four generations of restaurant business and handling meat and stuff. And we found he had it throughout his body. So we did um, 
black walnut, actually, again, topically, you can use it topically, because if you take it in your mouth, it's going down, it's not going up. <laughs> so sometimes we have to use it topically if it's in the head or the brain, and um, you can use it topically just on the skin. Uh, I've seen some, like, ringworm. By the way, ringworm is, if you go to the doctor, they'll probably tell you it's a fungus, it's really not, it's a parasite. <laughs> and black walnut will usually work on that, and sometimes you will see kids that get ringworm on their head. That's one area we can do it topically. Uh, so that will go along with that. Now some people say the robbers, you know, robbers is one of those that we talked about that before. Uh, it kind of works for everything, but I think they're in parasites, these are going to work better for you than the robbers itself. Uh, so either one of these will be parasite. Um, the next one is cilantro. Um, of course, you can eat it on your salad and get the same benefit. Cilantro is more for heavy metals getting out of your body. Now, if you have heavy, heavy metals, like in your teeth, and it's gone up into your head, again, it's hard to use this internally and get it there. Uh, you have to be careful. You can use cilantro. I can't use it for real chelation because if you've had amalgams in your teeth, that's the silver metal fillings, they have the metal there, and you don't want to encourage a lot of that detox because what it's doing is pulling it from your teeth into your body. You don't want a lot of that. But cilantro, a little bit, is not going to pull so much that's going to do uh, any real damage. I do encourage people that have the teeth issue. Um, we don't just say, okay, you should get all those out because sometimes it's not a good thing. If you already have stress on your body, if you go and have those out, it might put your body under more stress. So it's a timing thing, even if we do it at all. Uh, but we do know the foot bath, and that's something else we talk about. Uh, we have an ionic foot bath. There are different kinds. Um, we're not going into a lot of detail, but they will work, and it's safe to use those if you have Malcolm's too. So maybe a combination of using some of the cilantro and the foot bath would help if you have a lot of metal in your body. Uh, of course, that would be something, unless you just know that, that would be something you might find through an evaluation. Um, another thing I have is hawthorn. Uh, we were talking about that a little earlier. Hawthorn is a, more in the area of the heart. Uh, we've used it for blood pressure, but this is combination, not to work together, but in the same ballpark as cayenne. Cayenne uh, is very powerful as a blood cleaner. It can work on heart. Uh, this one, uh, we use it more for people, for symptoms kind of thing. Blood pressure might be part of it, it could be like arrhythmia things. But you wouldn't want to use both of them. I would be a little nervous about using them together because they're acting in the same way and you might push somebody over the edge. But if cayenne, I always kind of go to cayenne first <laughs> because it's kind of a, a heart medicine kind of thing. But then if it's not doing what you really want, then you might try some hawthorn. But just be careful, do not necessarily combine them. And of course, if you're taking heart medicine, you want to be very careful because the heart medicine is going to be like for blood pressure. If you're taking something for blood pressure and it's pushing your blood pressure down, now let me say this, if you have high blood pressure, blood pressure is a symptom, it's not a disease, okay? It's the body trying to tell us something, something's wrong. So of course the medical community will just give you medicine to push the heart of the blood pressure down. So your heart, blood, your blood pressure is trying to push something, pushing up saying, hello, something's wrong, and they're pushing it down, and it's pushing back up. Now, if you start taking something else where the blood pressure medicine is pulling it down, you start taking something else and they act together, then you're going to be bottoming out. And the blood pressure might still be a problem, but you're pushing it down, and that's when you have to be careful about, you know, lightheadedness, um, you know, uh, passing out, those kind of things because you don't want to combine these unless it's safe. You have to be very careful if you're taking medicine and taking herbals too because you're combining for the fact. Uh, but Hawthorne and Cayenne are similar, but they do can act differently for certain people if you're trying things. Okay? We have dandelion and milk thistle. These two kind of go together too. Um, both of these have an affinity uh, to the liver, liver cleansing. Um, I really like milk thistle, but dandelion might work when maybe milk thistle doesn't. 
Um, they do combine some of these together in formulas. If you went to an herbal shop, they might have a formula that had both of these in it. Uh, that probably wouldn't be a problem. Uh, in our office, we try to do one at a time to <laughs> see if we can really affect change with one as opposed to combining too many things because then we don't really know what's working. So we might try milk thistle and then go with the inline uh, to get ones at separate times. But these have an affinity to the liver. Another formula that we have is colloidal silver. Uh, now some of a few of you weren't here, so I'm going to bring this up again because it, it's probably with the vitamin C, it's probably the, uh, one of the most powerful things we have. Uh, it's called Robbers. It's an essential oil. It's an antimicrobial. Um, and we, I, I give this story, I have five kids, they're all older now, but <laughs> uh, my husband and myself and of course my mom, I treat her, we haven't basically been to the hospital in maybe 12 to 15 years, except for maybe a broken arm here and there. Because of this uh, formula, uh, it's antimicrobial, we've, I'm sure we've cured uh, strep infections with it. We uh, can use it for viruses when we get flus and things. Uh, we don't even use it straight. We, uh, actually, when you buy it, we give you another one of these uh, dropper bottles. And what we do is you use uh, two-thirds of olive oil with 20 to 25 drops of this, and then you'll actually dose out of this bottle. Um, we can, technically, you're not supposed to use essential oils internally, but we have for years. So you do what you feel is safe. Um, you can do it externally. It, one of the things, we have it, sore throats, you know, ear infections, just slather your throat area here. I have some people that use it straight. They're just so convinced they'll buy a bottle a month almost, uh, and they just take baths in it, <laughs> and they just use it often. Uh, but what I say, this is antimicrobial. Colloidal silver also is antimicrobial. Silver. I don't know if you've ever heard of people putting silver dollars into their milk jugs in the past. The reason they did that is because silver is antimicrobial. <laughs> so they could keep their milk fresher, longer, by putting a silver coin. Of course, we don't have silver coins. <laughs> we have other ones, so don't do that. Um, but colloidal silver was real popular back even 20 years ago, 15 years ago, and people were making their own, and we have made our own. When we started using it, I didn't have robbers, and we used it especially for this upper sinus area, ear infections. We, uh, I have another story. I had a young man who had been on four antibiotics for sinus infections, and his mom brought him in. I said, well, let's try the colloidal silver, and we're going to put it right up into his sinuses. She called me in about two hours and said, I don't know what this is doing, but he's, his nose is bleeding profusely. <laughs> And I'm like, well, is he passing out? You know, of course, that's body getting rid of. That's my mentality. Body's trying to get rid of something. He sat over a garbage can for about 30 minutes. And guess what? His sinus infection was gone by that night. Because he had all this stuff, and the antibiotics weren't killing anything, and all the stuff was holding it in. But colloidal silver did that. So I do still say, for sinus infections, <laughs> we use colloidal silver uh, just because it works so powerfully when that, at that time. So we will use it for a few things. Uh, one thing we do know, we're not so sure about the robbers as much, but colloidal silver, they have shown that if you take it internally too much, it's going to kill the good flora in your gut. So you have to combat that. Uh, some people started taking it uh, on a regular basis as a preventative. I don't advocate that because not that anybody I think that is taking the safe stuff is getting silver poisoning, but I don't know if you've ever seen somebody with silver poisoning. Their skin actually turns gray. I think they have actually gotten, gotten a poisoning from something else, maybe your exposure to a silver. I don't think this would necessarily give it to you, but I wouldn't advocate it drinking it all the time. And there's some people that call me and say, I take a lot of silver every day. I'm like, stop doing that. <laughs> it's not for preventative. It's for treatment. And, um, but I don't even use a lot. I would I use the robbers in that place just because we know this powerful. But it's a good thing to have around if you need it. Uh, and it is antimicrobial too. Can I ask you about dosing? You mentioned dosing for the robbers. Uh -huh. the olive oil. What would how much to use, you mean? 
Yeah. A couple drops is all you really need internally. And I do it what, usually two or three times a day. If you're getting a sore throat, I'd apply it to the neck area down the eustachian troops because everything here, the sinuses, the throat, and the ears are all connected. So you don't want the fluid moving among those places because if there's back, um, bacteria there, it's going to move around. So I do sinuses, throat, neck for that kind of thing two or three times a day. And I just put a few drops in my hand and just rub it around. If you'd use it internally, I would probably do two or three drops. Um, now in your case, if you want to try it on the teeth, yeah. just put a few drops on the finger and rub it in the, on the gums maybe twice a day. Now, are you talking about the essential oil by itself, the robbers by itself, two or three drops? Or are you talking about your but two thirds of In the day? bottle, the dropper bottle, not the concentrated yeah. stuff. The, you're talking with the olive oil, the yes. 20 drops, just two or three drops of that? Uh-huh. Oh, gosh, yeah. am I doing it? I've given it. That's okay. Okay. okay, it doesn't hurt. Like, they gave <laughs> yeah. me for it when they got colds. Yeah. They come to my house and they'll say, I won't roll. Okay, that's job. fine. I mean, you can't really hurt them because it's not concentrated, but I don't think you need that much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. What was the ratio again? 10 to 20 drops to... Um, it's two-thirds of the bottle I, of olive oil to 20 to 25 drops of the of thieves. And that's not... Really, I just do that. Being that size? This dropper bottle here, two about two-thirds of the bottle. Olive oil. You can use other kind of oils, but we use olive oil just because it's a good oil. And two thirds of this bottle, and put 20 to 25 drops of the robbers in. And you know that's not that's something I just kind of made up <laughs> because I felt like that was still a concentration that works, and we've used it for years and it still works well. Um, I I've never heard of that anywhere else. Most people. They tell you to put in carrier oil, but they don't tell you how much. So I've just kind of made it up. And it's convenient having it in this kind of bottle. Now, if you have a long time, I will say you'll probably disintegrate the, the uh, dropper. <laughs> you'll have to either buy new bottles or buy new droppers um, just because it's an oil. But um, they'll last a long time. And the oil will not go bad as long as you... Uh, here's another thing, though. If you're giving any of this stuff, if you give it to people, try not to put it in your mouth. Because if you touch your mouth, you can contaminate the, um, the dropper, and then there's probably going to be bacteria in there. It's going to look bad. And if it looks cloudy and bad, throw it away. <laughs> Make a new one. But that can be for any. So I try to tell people, you know, hold, just do the hold it up and drop it into the mouth so you're not contaminating the bottle. Or putting it into something like herbs. You can put them into other water and drink it. Uh, especially with kids. They have, I, I see it even my mom's business. Well, take it. And, Clench their mouth down over the drop of yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> but it can be contaminated, so any just be careful with that too, because you don't want to be taking in bacteria yeah. in there. <laughs> okay, is that okay? Okay, all right, great. Okay, so uh, I did grab a couple other things here. Um, this was another smooth loop tea. I do like this too. It's a little more gentle than the Formula One if you don't need it. But it's, again, always good to have something around this, even if you don't have a problem. And that's what this is about. We're trying to say first aid. Having things in the house when something happens is a whole lot better than trying to, um, like I've told people, especially if you get sick, your brain falls out. I know you for me. It's like I have all this information, and when I'm sick, what do I do? You know, I have to call somebody. Call a friend. Okay, here's what's going on. What do I do? Uh, so you don't want to have to think. And another thing I've told people, uh, like you're taking notes or you have your list, make a list and put it, tape and tape it in a cupboard that you have some of this first aid stuff because that way it's handy. Because I always, and I know some of you have come, and I'm not being uh, critical, but people will call me and they'll say, what am I supposed to do? I'm like, like, did you tap? Did you take vitamin C? <laughs> oh, I forgot that. <laughs> These are basic things. So have them written down. Have those th basic things in the house so you can get to them right away. Because the best time to treat somebody is in the first stages of getting sick. Because then maybe you're not going to get really sick. If you wait a day or two, then it's already bad. And then it's kind of like, you know, you might have to be able to get over it quicker, but you still got to live with it. <laughs> so that's why some of these things are good. So here another thing, smooth move. Um, this is one thing a lot of people maybe don't know. I, I didn't know it for a long time. 
But a child especially who has fever, if you can ha get them to have a bowel movement, they're probably going to drop that fever. And so even in those contexts, if you had something similar like this, that you could get them, not that they're constipated, but if you can get them to have a bowel movement, they're going to drop that fever. So this might be a case, give the kids, it's, this tea I think tastes pretty good, you put a little stevia sugar in it and give it to the kids, but um, that might be a good thing, even for a fever, not just constipation. Okay? All right, we're still doing pretty good. Um, let me see. I don't know if I talked about this last time for the women. And, well, we have used it for a few men, too. Um, sometimes women have issues like hot flashes, maybe, irregular cycles. And we don't want, uh, we want to fix those in the bigger picture. But sometimes you can use things in this world will, that will help us. And one thing, it's become more popular, but it, this is called progest. It's natural progesterone. It's taken usually from like chase tree berry or wild yam. These are herbs, okay? So they're not, it's not like if you go to your doctor and get a medicine. That's chemical, and that's um, been extracted from thing, or not extracted, actually. And people don't want to hear this, but most of the time when you go get this medicine, they, you get it from horse urine, okay? And that's just kind of weird, just if you think about that. But most of the medicines you're gonna get for hormones, that's where they're coming from. So this is a natural product. Um, we use this, it's a cream, it's transdermal. And you could use it, a lot of people just try it with hot flashes, that's one thing we do. Um, it can be used other ways, a few people have used it if you get hormonal headaches maybe from in the back and up here. We have actually applied it to the temples or the back then in, if you're having those issues. Um, and it's one of those things you almost have to talk through it. <laughs> what do you need it for? Uh, we don't just say, okay, you're going to just take it to take it. But there, uh, Dr. John Lee is the doctor who did for 25 years. He studied progesterone and the effects on women. Um, when One thing, I think I brought this up the last time, but um, okay, I just lost my train. Oh, osteoporosis. True osteoporosis is not a calcium problem, it's a progesterone problem. So there again, doctors are putting on calcium. Women are not, they're having kidney stones, bone spurs, other joint problems because they've got way too much calcium in their body instead of fixing what they need to be fixed. Okay, and then those are the people I usually see who have a calcium problem, oh, way over calcium, because calcium is not going to leave the body naturally. Calcium is one of those storing things. Magnesium will leave the body naturally. Um, and, um, sodium will leave the uh, body naturally. But calcium and potassium, the other two minerals that are key, will not if they're not balanced out. And we talked about this last time, but this is important if you can get it. Magnesium and calcium go together. Potassium and sodium go together. And they have to be balanced for the body to use them properly. Okay? And calcium is one of those that really scares me because I see so many people coming in now with too much calcium. It's like they have a deficiency, but they have too much in the body because the body doesn't use it, it just stores it. And that's where we're seeing problems, especially joint problems for women. Uh, so it's kind of like, it's kind of weird you have an osteoporosis problem, which is joint, and yet they're having problems with joints in the process. So that's, just be careful. I mean, welcome to talk to anybody about it. It's not something I just say, just start taking it and stay on it forever. It, there's this kind of a little bit of a formula to it, but it is really good. Some women that just have hot flashes only can take this and it just kind of disappears. Okay. Hot flashes, by the way, can be a lot too much sugar, too. <laughs> so it's not just hormonal, but uh, this is sometimes what I say kind of a lifesaver so for some women that have that issue. Okay. Dr. John Lee, if you want to check him out, he has books and website stuff. He's, not, he's passed away now, but he does have a lot of information. Okay. okay. All right. So let's talk about a couple other things that aren't herbal in a sense, but things you could do at home. We have uh, hydrotherapy, and hydrotherapy is kind of a, it, it's fun and it's not fun. <laughs> hydrotherapy is basically hydro's water therapy. 
And what you do, it's usually isolated to one part of the body as opposed to the whole body because it is very intense. And here's how it goes. You say, we'll do say if you have any, some knee pain. And you want, uh, what this does is generating uh, blood flow. And so you have, hopefully have a squirter in your shower. That works the best. And so you take and you first turn the water down so all it is is cold. And you douse your knee with that. And keep it on as long as you can. 15 seconds is usually a good <laughs> And it's best to do it, either warn your family or do it when anybody's wrong. Because you will be yelling <laughs> if you douse your knee with coin. That's one. Okay, and so then you find, you have to kind of play with your spigot. Because what you want to find then is a temperature that you can stand. You don't want to burn yourself. But you want to get the temperature back up to a hot enough temperature to move the blood. Now what's going to happen? Hot water is going to bring the blood to the surface. Cold water is going to drive it back down into your body. So if you're doing it on the knee then you're going to put that hot water on the knee for five sec or 15 seconds. Then you're going to turn that water down to cold again. And you're going to do this cycle maybe about seven times. Okay. So then what you're doing is you're bring bringing that blood flow, really intensifying it. And it can create healing. And it can also uh, create, uh, like if you do have pain, sometimes just getting the blood flow. And you can do this on the whole body too. <laughs> I have done it a few times and my family will say, you, do, you will be yelling. Because <laughs> you can't help it. You just got to yell in that water. Um, this I learned from Dr. Schultz too. And we have, he puts out videos. Now I, have, I tell this story because it is so funny. This man is funny. Okay, He's just a funny man too. He said he was over in Europe. Now these are things they go and pay people, but you go and pay to have this kind of thing done. But you go and there's like showers and they will do this. And he said he wanted to go to one of these salons or places to have this done. Well, he's walking up across and there's all these people in wheelchairs and they're just like, he said, oh, I feel so bad for them because there's all these poor people, they can't walk, they look, they're drooling and stuff. And he's, he said, I'm vibrant, I went into this and I'm in here and did this. So what they do is he goes into this box and first of all, you don't see it coming there. They take a bucket of cold ice water and throw it over the wall and it hits you. And he's like, oh, oh screaming. <laughs> and then you turn and they do the same thing. And they do this about seven times. And then he says, okay, so I came out of there. They put me in the wheelchair. I was drooling and they wheeled me out to the car. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't the people. And he tells it funnier than I do. But it is intense, okay? But it's powerful because he used it on himself. Uh, and again, I use him because he, uh, at one point, as an herbalist, he spilled oil on his arm and basically burned his arm. He peeled it, uh, just kind of like a glove, he took the skin off his hand and down his arm. And they told him it would never heal. And yet he used hydrotherapy and other herbs, and he regrew all his skin and the muscle and everything back on his arm. And I, that's another reason why I follow this man, because... <laughs> He has proven it for himself, plus a lot of, but he has a lot of intense things. But this hydrotherapy, you know, you're not going to do it every other day. Let's, <laughs> you can try it, and it's, it's kind of fun to try, but it's, it's intense. But it does invigorate you, and it will cause detox. So you can try this, but uh, kind of get it in extremes, getting as cold as you can and getting as hot. But here's another thing, my kids, and we lived in Pennsylvania, so up in the snow belt, and we had... And there was this thing, people around where we were, they said, they do the same thing, but you, you get in a hot tub and sit there for a while, and then you get out and roll in the snow. <laughs> and it's, that's actually not as hard as the water, because you're just kind of there. And we've done that before. My kids do that, and they've done that too. But um, we don't have the snow, so you can't really do that here. But <laughs> it does work that way, and we have done it. It was kind of uh, intense, though. Okay, we have the ionic foot bath in our office, and the, I, we haven't actually, from what we've hunted for some, we haven't found a practitioner that really has one up in this area, unless somebody knows of one, uh, to really help people to be able to have that here. Uh, it is a detoxification, it's based on ions, uh, positive electrons, negative electrons, uh, and you basically, we do it on the feet, there's nothing special about the feet, but it, it gets pretty nasty, so not too many people want to put their hands in it. 
uh, but it's detoxing, very powerful for 30 minutes. And we found when we're doing other things, chelation things, that it really helps to detox people faster than if their body has to do it itself. And uh, it's, we've had ours for um, probably about 12 years, and we just bought a second one, so we're using them uh, both at the same time now. Uh, we also just recently in March came, we bought a beam ray, and some of you have already had a chance to use that. It's based on Dr. Reif's original research back in the 1930s. And he was a bacteriologist, he worked with pathogens, and he determined um, that you could kill pathogens by finding the frequency that resonated with them. And that's similar if you've ever seen a, the illustration with a crystal glass. If you, uh, of course, get that note that the glass resonates, the glass will fret, um, explode. And bacteria, viruses, fungals, pathogens, can do the same thing if you know what that virus or the frequency is. Now, it's not one frequency for all viruses. It's specific for each one. And Dr. Rice spent hours. He'd actually stay up for 24 to 36 hours looking through a microscope, watching to find that exact frequency that would kill that pathogen. And so we um, owe him a lot of credit because he did a lot of this work. Um, now, the beam ray that I have was purchased or made by a man who was able to purchase some of Dr. Reif's original research. Dr. Reif uh, was given, um, I think, 16 terminally ill cancer patients. He cured them in nine, 90 days. Uh, that wasn't real popular either, as we talked about earlier. But uh, So he basically didn't go into hiding, but he really had to scale back. But he had some of his research put away that wasn't confiscated. Um, Lynn Kenny was able to purchase some of it and build a machine, scaled down model, but that did basically the same. And that's what this machine we have uh, is able to do. It's gener frequency generation. Uh, it's based on light and sound. Uh, it's pat I guess it's patented, but it's labeled as a communication device. It's not a medical device, but it's communication because it gives off frequency and it uh, acts on our body to actually kill pathogens and then also can support the body because you can't kill your liver by frequency. You can only support it. So we use this machine for that. We've had a lot of real powerful uh, work there. Um, anybody, there is a YouTube a video out there that kind of goes through the whole thing of what it does and how it's worked for people. So if you're interested, I, if I don't have it, I can get, get it to you. Did you say B-E-A-M? Pardon? B-E-A-M? Yes, B-E and then Ray. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course when you go out, you'll find it out there, but when you pull stuff up, sometimes you get all kinds of stuff. <laughs> might not be the specific thing. Um, we have a teeth protocol. This would be for um, people that actually we have seen, uh, not, I haven't done so much, but I have friends that have done this, um, using cell salts. I think we talked about cell salts a little last time, but there's cell salts specifically that they use, and unfortunately I didn't grab the specifics, but again, I could get that for you, but using the cell salts, it's morning, afternoon, and night, we've seen cavitations actually get smaller. Especially if you, again, you have kids that just get those tiny little pockets and of course the dentist is ready to fill those cavities, but sometimes they're so small the body can reverse them. Uh, and most people don't want to hear that, but you can. <laughs> um, but cell salts, we have a teeth protocol that actually can do that, and I have a couple parents that have used that and have seen that happen. Um, one of the uh, little girls we did, it actually filled her too. Her tooth had those deeper pockets in it and actually filled it back in. Um, okay. Say, say, Pardon? What kind of salt? Cell salts. They're C E L L salts. There's 12 of them. Uh, and they, they're homeopathic, 6X potency. I don't know if you've ever seen them. But there's uh, three different ones you can use specifically. If you get, me, uh, get your email, get my email or yours, we can get that to you. Okay. Um, okay, one thing, I know uh, Susan was talking a little bit about the butter, I don't know if that's getting, we do butter, uh, not just making butter, we can do that with raw milk, but also, if you take, uh, I take a pound of like, say, you don't have to do organic, but I get organic butter, 
and I'll take a cup to two cups of olive oil and I'll put that in a like my blender or something mix those together so you know we all love butter and butter's not a bad thing margarine's bad don't eat margarine <laughs> it's chemicals it's horrible and butter's not a bad thing but too much might be too, it's not a we're talking about in the fat category butter is not an omega-3 those are the best okay but their butter's not a bad thing. But what if you can cut it in half by putting it in olive oil? And another fun thing about it is, but again, if you have family, it's then it's like, you know, you buy the spreads. It's not hard anymore. You put it in the refrigerator, you can keep it in the refrigerator. But now it's like a spread, and it's soft all the time. But you do like, it's almost like half and half. It's a little less on the oil because it will get a little runny if you put, like, equal amounts. So I cut it down a little bit to about cup and a half to a pound of butter. But you can um, put that in this, um, you then can have good oils and fats. You can have the taste of butter, but you don't have to have all butter, and it's always going to be spreadable. So that's another good one. Use extra virgin. Pardon? Use extra virgin. Well, I, with the olive oils, one thing I always find, you want to look for cold press. Now there yeah. again, the best thing is organic cold press. That's the best. But it does get a little pricey, so it just depends on what you do. But you always want to look for the cold press because that means it's not been heated. And if it's heated, don't probably buy it because then it could be more chemical. <laughs> it's not good then. Um, don't buy the big gallons <laughs> at Walmart. <laughs> Those are not, yeah. well, if it's di difference between a vegetable oil and olive oil, well, maybe. <laughs> but you're better off going to get that, the better oil. And <coughs> I find. <coughs> I sometimes go to Earth Fair and they have them on sale, a pretty good size, and it's organic compresso. If you find them on sale at even Earth Fair, sometimes you can get a pretty good size bottle and it's not so bad. I will throw this out for those who maybe haven't heard. You don't ever want to cook with olive oil. And that's kind of a misnomer, a lot of people don't know that. As soon as you cook, olive oil has a very low flash point, and if you cook with it, it's going to turn, turn it to like a rancid. Um, so olive oil is something you use only on salad dressing or in butter, things like that. When you want to use cooking oil, um, my favorite is always going to be coconut oil. And I, I think I gave that on the last talk. It's the, when they tell us not to use it, it's all political, so don't listen to them. <laughs> but uh, coconut oil is really at the top of the list. Uh, and they gave, let's do the, uh, for some people that weren't here earlier, let's help me with that again. MCT. MCT. It's a... Medium chain triglycerides, and it's extracted from coconut oil, but it's always liquid because coconut oil below 76 is going to be like shortening, and above that is it's liquid. So depending on what you want it for, but if you're going to put it in salads, when you dump it on your salad, then it turns hard and it's not fun. Then. <laughs> so this supposedly uh, is always oil. What they've done, so done something. And Vitacost, I think they have. Did you find it somewhere else? Amazon. Amazon, if you just look for that, you probably can purchase that somewhere. I haven't found it around here the over there anymore, but maybe somebody will start selling it and nobody <laughs> ask for it. Anymore. So, coconut oil is the best. <coughs> um, I, use, can, I do sometimes use palm oil, which is like a short meat. Um, vegetable oils just aren't good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, those three are the best. A uh, grapeseed oil could be okay too. Um, but whatever you want, those but keep them in that category because when you get to vegetable oil and those kind of things, especially super heated, you know, worst thing you could get. Um, but vegetable oils are not the best. Corn oils and things like that. Okay, let's see what else we have. Um, hummus. I like to bring this up because a lot of people have never heard of it before, but it's it's such a good food. I just <laughs> like it. It's ba base is it's a, like a Middle East Indian food, but it's it's like chickpeas, garbanzo beans. That's what you make it out of, and you can buy it. And I guess it's very popular to buy too. But you can make it yourself and make variety. You get the garbanzo beans, and I use my food processor, I put that in. Cumin is a key part of it, cumin and ch the chickpeas, and then after that you can put anything you want in it. <laughs> uh, or tahini too, that's sesame seed. 
uh, butter or sesame seeds, depending on what you want. So those are the three main ingredients, and you can play around with it. You can do the garlic. I know they put lemon juice in it, but we do some salad dressings. You can put peppers in it. It's just a fun food. It's a dip, mainly, for chips, but you can put it on rolls. You can put anything. It, and it, it's a very distinct taste, you know? I guess some people don't like it, but if you like it and get that one you like, it's just a fun food. I think it's great. And it's for kids, if they like it, it's good nutrition. <laughs> you know, something. So that's why I don't put a lot of food on my list. But hummus is one of those. If you've never had it, maybe seek it out. But if you don't like the first one you try, don't throw it out because there are different tastes. And if you can make your own, uh, play with it at home. But hummus, garbanzo beans, tahini, which is sesame seed uh, butter, and cumin. Those are the main, those are kind of the key things, the body of them. <laughs> okay, did we talk about stevia much last time? I'll bring that up again. Stevia is not an artificial sweetener. It's a herb, and it's concentrated sweet, okay? It's the only sweetener that I believe they found that does not spike your insulin. Uh, your, if you have diabetes or you're concerned about that kind of thing and you're taking in like aspartame and zero calorie sugar it's still going to act the same as a sugar on your system and so you know i feel very sad for a lot of people that have diabetes and things when they're being told go get the artificial sweeteners because they're really not helping themselves uh, they're really creating just the same problem i'd say go ahead and eat the sugar because it's not going to be any different <laughs> Um, but stevia does not supposedly do that. And in this realm, I'll bring this up, I just learned this a little while back, broccoli has the same insulin spike as sugar, which is like so amazing to me. And I read this in a book, um, Artichokes and Broccoli, which are in vegetables and broccoli, we've told, it's probably a great vegetable, but if you're, you're watching that sugar thing, don't eat broccoli. <laughs> It is one of those vegetables that will actually spike in. And that's chemical speaking, okay? These are from chemists who have done experiments with food, and they thought, in the book I read, two doctor chemists said broccoli and artichokes will spike your insulin. So if you're on any kind of diet for that, stop eating broccoli and artichokes. <laughs> Sorry, because <laughs> I like broccoli too, but, um, so just be careful. It's put it in the bread category now. <laughs> okay. All right, so I think I'm going to actually stop for right now as far as what I'm giving because I really want to give us some time if you have specific questions, and uh, this will also bring up some things. Uh, as we finish up, I always say, you know, I'll be around for as long as you want. I'll answer questions personally. We have things up here you can come up and look at. My daughter is available too. But we'll, let's just take a few minutes, and if you have specific questions, um, if I can't answer you, maybe somebody else has an answer, because I know a lot of you have a lot of information. Okay, okay. the <clears throat> stevia, what about those store products like the Truthia? Is that still... Read the label, because a lot of those have other things in them. If you have something like dextrose or sucrose in those, or, you know, do read, write it down, go home and investigate what is that in there. Those are not true stevia products. And anything that has O's at the end, that's a sugar product. And that's going to bump your insulin up if that's why you're doing it. Or it's going to do something. Okay. So read the label. Yeah, true. Yeah, I haven't done a big thing, but I've looked at those in the store. I'm like, eh, it's not just stevia. It's got other stuff in it. Uh, so read the labels and um, check it out. Mm -hmm. The two companies I'm familiar with is Stevita and Sweetleaf, and those I think are pretty much true stevia. So I have a 17 year old son who is coughing constantly because of allergies. Okay. And so I went to I went to a, um, a Chinese market today, and I can't pronounce the whole name of the product, but it had loquat and honey in it to mm -hmm. quiet the cough. Okay. So I'm just wondering what's going on, right? Well, first of all, bring them down and see. <laughs> we'll get rid of allergies, you know. But for in, because you're my client, remember we can do that tapping at home? You can take a glass outside because it's, if it's pollen related, 
or of course food is a bigger issue than the pollen if it's something with pollen. There's something about there's something about the last two weeks people have been calling and saying their allergies have been stirring up. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a tree that's uh, blooming right now that a lot of people have problems. So take a glass of water and put it out on your patio for a couple days. Then do that tapping treatment with him holding that pollen in the water, and that should make a difference. Uh, with that because again the honey concept it, it's it's um coat so you maybe don't have that tickle and some people use the honey because of the pollen maybe it has pollen in it and there's kind of a it's a homeopathic concept a little bit but if you eat local honey it has pollen that you're being exposed to and your body kind of desensitizes to it but that's not going to fix like right now and the tapping treatment is pretty powerful, so if you do that too. And I know some of you might not know what that means, and I don't want to really go into that right now, but people who have been in my office know kind of what that is. <laughs> um, but kidding the pollen. Now I will say too, they're spraying in the air. There's all kinds of stuff going on. They've been you know, dumping stuff out of uh, planes, so it might not just be the pollen, but if you do the water, you're going to get anything in there that's going on around you. Yes. Do you have suggestions to help young children bed wedding? Bed wedding, that's a hard one. Um, and it can be physical things. So that right. Well, not drinking up to bedtime. That's, yeah. a, that's an easy one, but it's not always the problem. Um, there, it could be food allergies. Um, there are some homeopathics that sometimes help. Uh, rescue remedy that we've talked about before, because there's a lot of emotional things especially if it's gone on for a while, sometimes we can, you know, deal with the emotional. It's not a quick fix, necessarily. Now, sometimes it does quick fix, <laughs> but to find what it is, you kind of play around with it sometimes. But there's, those are some of the things I usually tell people to try first. Um, and, and sometimes it's citric acid for some reason, and I haven't done a lot of research with that, but I have had a few people, even older children, even adults, that are having problems. We found that there's an allergy maybe to citric acid or phen certain phenolics. So that'd be harder to trace. Mm -hmm. But uh, look and see what foods they're eating. If there's, you know, if there's an inconsistency, if it's not every night. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Going back when everybody was making olive oil silver. Uh huh. Um, I remember one of the things they said that if you bought a prepared product, it loses its power like in a matter of a week or so. Mm -hmm. So I guess that was, I don't know whether that was to get people to make their own, to do that, yeah. or whether it was a real problem. Mm -hmm. So we never bought any unless we stopped making any, but yeah. of course we didn't have any anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was wondering if you had heard any of that. Um, we've always made our own. And basically what is happening when you're making the colloidal silver, it strips very minute particles. And if there is a way to make it this safe, if you, some people, I, some of the people I knew, I was lived in the Amish communities, and they were making it all the time. And I had, a, not, not an Amish man, but one person said, well, I'm just going to hook it up to the electrical outlet and get this done quicker. <laughs> He's like, uh, no, you can't do that because it was stripping both big particles. But minute particles, and colloid means that they're being suspended in the water. It's not like salt when you put it in there. Salt dissolves. They're not dissolving the, um, the silver, but it's colloid in there. So if you think about that concept, would it ever get weak? If the silver is being suspended in the water, how could it get weak? The only way it could get weak is if it fell out of the water. It's not going to go away. So my, I would guess that it really wouldn't go weak. And we've had ours at times, we make it in a bigger bottle and keep it for a period of time. And we've never seen any sediment in the bottom. Of course, we make it very slow and try to get those very tiny particles. So I'm not sure, my, I'm not an expert by any means, but because of the way you make it, I would say it should not ever lose its potency because it's the silver suspended in the water. And where's it going to go? Unless it evaporates, but I don't see it does. Um, so that's, I would say no. It probably would go on for forever, kind of. Unless it got contaminated again, if you saw stuff in it, then you would do away with it. But, but I think it probably would last, because some of those bottles would, you know, people would make, I think they 
if they have in it what they say they have in it, that might be the question. <laughs> you know, sometimes people are selling things that are not maybe as concentrated or whatever. Um, we always figured, well, if we were making it, we know what's in it. <laughs> we know how we made it, and to make it, I, we, you can actually buy the silver and make the little machine for about $25. And the silver we've had for 20, 12 years probably, and you can't even tell it, there's a, they're just two little wires. <laughs> and except for turning black, you can't tell there's anything gone off of them after 12 years. Um, they just, it takes, you never have to buy more silver. It just goes on forever, pretty much. Unless you lose them, lose them periodically. <laughs> but I would say, if anybody's interested in using that, it's pretty easy to do. You just have to know how to make it and make it safely. Does that answer your question? Yeah, because, you know, we eventually stopped making it. Right. Well, nobody was very sick. It's like, right. we yeah. keep making this stuff and nobody's using it. Well, that's <laughs> kind of how we got to, because we got, the robbers, and we were like, well, we don't ever use the silver. Not that we didn't have access to making it more, but yeah, we weren't making it like we did at one time because we used the robbers instead, and we thought it was more powerful. But we still do. Once in a while, every, if people are getting like throat infections, I'm like, we need something to guard one. We make a little bit and pass throat. But yeah. Mm -hmm. I missed what you said you used the hydrotherapy for. Well, it, it's to, you can use it for detoxing because it's about the blood, getting your blood circulating. If there's pain in like the joint maybe, and it's not going back and treating so much, but say if you just don't have good blood flow. Um, I always think of like knees and things, maybe legs, um, plus it's not so intense. <laughs> when you get up here in the body, it's like, ah. <laughs> uh, It's easier to do it there, or elbows. Um, they have said they can, you can use it like if somebody did get like the burn, you need to heal skin, something skin, uh, burns or whatever would be skin related, bringing that blood to the surface. Um, but it is definitely that moving it in and out, getting it to really circulate. Mm -hmm. Experiment. <laughs> the first little bottle of minerals that you had up there, you said it was calcium, sodium, magnesium, and potassium? Yes, those are the big right. ones. What is that the big one, you mean? No, the little one. The bottle. small one, like this yes. one, yeah. or this one? No, that one. This one. Where, that one. Okay, yes, this has the four main minerals in it, but it has trace, like 80 trace minerals, too. Okay, and do you take it with juice or water? Uh, you can put it in juice or water. It's really um, it tastes bitter. really yucky. <laughs> minerals taste You don't like. have to do you don't have to, though. You can no, nice you can yet. take, the way I take it is I'll get a little Dixie cup and squeeze some lemon in it just because it takes that heavy taste off and put it and then I'll drink something afterwards. Uh, but it, it's very powerful. Do you and take the, it every day? I don't because I don't need it every day. But it, some people that do need minerals, again, once, if you can get your minerals balanced, you wouldn't need it every day. But like if you're doing heavy detox, because detoxification is going to pull good minerals with the bad stuff. And then you would want to supplement, like with the foot bath. You'd want to use this with the foot bath okay. for a couple days just to replenish your minerals afterwards. But people that do need it, um, they really, it's a good product, very powerful for people that need it. Um, I think we talked a little bit last time too. This is another product. It has the same minerals in it, but also have higher electrolytes for like if somebody's out working or sports, using it for that. My sons use it when they go on hikes. They'll go like 50 mile hikes and I send it with them to put in their water. They might put 10 to 20 drops of this. This would be the same, except it tastes really yucky. <laughs> you wouldn't want to drink a water bottle of this where this is not as intense. But it is very and good. And if you use, um, what kind of water do I use? Alkaline water. If you use distilled water, do you need to take more minerals? Oh, yes. I, here, here's, and it's everybody's a preference, because I know practitioners do. I would never recommend anybody drinking distilled water, only because distilled water has zero minerals in it. And water has an affinity to want to have minerals. So what happens when you drink it? It's grabbing your minerals, taking it to the water, and then when you urinate, it's taking them out. So that's why you should have minerals in your water. Now, there's a whole, I mean, I could talk for half hour now on water alone, right? Because <laughs> there's a whole debate. But I personally don't, 
the whole, I'm thinking chemistry minded now. I personally do not advocate drinking distilled water because it, water has an affinity to want minerals in it, it's going to grab it. If it doesn't have any in it, it's going to grab it for someone and it's going to be you. But if you take 40 drops of that stuff in there. Well, it. maybe. <laughs> but there, I mean, still, I, I guess you could do that, and you would definitely want to. <laughs> that would help you keep your water up. I just, I just can't advocate yeah. drinking distilled water only because because there's some people that need good water and 40 drops of this a day. <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know, are you going to absorb this? Are you going to, is it really going to? Uh, balance out that distilled water and taking enough of these that that would be maybe a hard call but just definitely be careful <laughs> because it's it's one of those things I've had other practitioners advocate it and I'm like okay I try to look at things chemically you know and what's happening chemically just like the broccoli <laughs> like okay broccoli seems like a good thing but if there's doctors and researchers saying that it spikes people's insulin well, then we have to take and say, okay, we shouldn't maybe be eating a lot of broccoli because that's the worst thing we could have happening because we don't want to spike anything. <laughs> but that's definitely part of that concept. So just be careful if you're taking distilled water. And, but definitely you want to make sure your mineral content is high. You're taking in minerals too. Okay? Any other questions about that? Minerals are... Oh, I did... Um, I, I told some people last week, I've been really experimenting with minerals. I think I, I've been doing this a couple months. Um, I have found some other things I'll add to the list here. I started playing around. There's different kinds of, say, sodium. There's different kinds of magnesium, calcium, all those. So I'm kind of playing around with the different kinds because so often we just pick the, the easy one. Magnesium citrate, the calm that we do have some of that up here, most people are taking magnesium citrate. Now we do use Epsom salts, and Epsom salts is magnesium sulfate. So I've been asking this question, and I've been playing around with it. What, uh, of course we do soak baths with the magnesium sulfate, the Epsom salts, but what if your body needs it, like internally to take it? And my daughter does put the Epsom salts in capsules, so when somebody needed magnesium, instead of doing the, the Epsom salts, like, what if we can't, why don't we just take some pills of it? <laughs> of course, you don't want to eat it, drink it because it's horrible, it tastes terrible. And another one I've been playing around with was um, the sodium also, because sodium, we, can, we know that we can do cell salts, I, I mean, excuse me, sea salt, Celtic salt, that's what we use on our food. We don't use sodium chloride because it's not good for us. But we also have, we can use sea salt, which is kind of one thing, we also have rock salt. Um, so rock salt is a different kind of salt. I'm not sure what it is, but I've been testing people, saying, okay, if somebody needs salt, what if we don't take it internally, but we start soaking our feet and absorbing it into our tissues? And I found one of the areas that's been difficult for me is like people that have heart issues that retain water, that just start retaining water. And, Usually, we're like, okay, take some Lasix and that'll get out. But I am finding that, I'm hoping this is going to work because it's going to really save a lot of people with hassle. I'm finding a lot of these people don't have enough sodium. Of course, a heart doctor's not going to tell their people to drink, eat more sodium. They usually say, stop eating so But I'm finding it's a lack of sodium. And if I, I put them in a foot bath with sodium, which could be, could be sea salt, but it also might be rock salt, and there's difference. And we're actually seeing some people who are retaining water, and there is a correlation to the whole heart thing. But soaking your feet, and almost immediately, within hours, they're starting to dump this water. So it's really kind of cool. And that's with the people that have got the you know, swelling in the legs. We're bringing it back up into the body. Something about, the, again, balancing out the minerals. And that's the key thing. It's the minerals, not the salt get the balanced minerals, the circulation gets going, and then they're getting rid of this uh, fluid off their system. So, I don't know, I still need some more time to play around with it, but I am getting some positive results with that, so I'm excited about that. Yes, ma'am? So what were you going to talk about garlic and onions? Yeah. Oh, yes, garlic and onions. Uh, let me talk about super tonic. <laughs> That's garlic and onions. This is another Dr. Schultz thing. Um, 
he makes something that's called super tonic. And we, again, we have tried it, we've used it, it's very powerful. It's basically getting a mixture, and he says equal parts, but it doesn't always work out that way. You're going to use garlic, you're going to use, I use like hot onions, uh, ginger, horseradish, Ooh. and, now I forgot what the other thing is. Jalapenos. He uses jalapenos. <laughs> you can use cayenne probably too, but he, he says jalapenos are better. So you take a mixture of this, and I have made it different ways, but the best way I like to do it is put it in my food processor so you chop it all up. Be careful with the, the um, jalapenos. No, the horseradish. If you get too much horseradish, it's going to be, I, it's bad. <laughs> so it, this is the root, of course. I'll do things fresh. But keep the horseradish to a minimum. And it depends on how. I make it in a gallon jug, so I'm going to kind of fill this up. Um, and I keep my horseradish to about a hump that. One time we did a big one and it was, we, we couldn't do it. But you chop everything up and you put it in whatever you want to. We do a gallon jug, you might want to do a smaller one. I get the glass pickle jugs, you know, they're nice to make this stuff in. And then you're going to cover the whole thing with apple cider vinegar. To cover it all the way up, and you're going to put it in a dark cupboard, and this is going to, I say, cook for about 30 days. That's the best time, um, what we usually do. And then you take it out. Now, we again, we have people that eat the stuff. We strain off all the stuff, <laughs> and we have liquid. But you can, some people eat it, like on salads even. But what this is, this is a powerful, again, antimicrobial kind of thing, and it just... I mean, it's amazing. People tell it's powerful, it's strong, but again, I, my mother, she's, she likes to be well. <laughs> she swears by this, especially in the winter, she takes a tablespoon every day, and she never gets cold. She just never gets sick. And so this is, again, one of those, it could be a preventative thing. My family tastes horrible, but my kids even, when they start feeling bad, it's like, where's the super tonic? You know? <laughs> Hopefully we have some. But... Um, They'll even take it, and it's powerful. I mean, it's the first couple times that I took it, and went, I mean, it goes down and hits your stomach. Hopefully, it's not going to come back up. <laughs> but go slow. But it again is the onions and the garlic. I mean, all of them. Uh, but garlic, of course, has a very uh, potent antimicrobial thing too. So eating garlic is good, not for your friends, but <laughs> husband, but. Garlic is good. It doesn't count if you cook it, okay? I'm sorry. It's got to be fresh, and it's, uh, it doesn't, once you cook it, the medicinal parts are gone. Uh, the other thing I'll say, the apple cider vinegar is the extraction uh, for the medicinal parts of these things, too. <laughs> That's why we do use either alcohol or apple cider vinegar when we make our formulas. And we do use alcohol with the ones we make. Uh, I do say if you're going to use them with the kids and you have a little bit of a problem with that, you can always put it into a warm uh, water and that will evaporate the alcohol out and then you just get the medicinal part too. So it's garlic, onions, horseradish, and jalapenos. And, and ginger. ginger. But and what's ginger. the equal part? Which well, part? he says equal parts, but you know, a lot of jalapenos and onions, there's a big difference between. Mm -hmm. So I don't usually do it. I put more onions and I'll have like, uh, you know, less jalapenos and less horseradish. Uh, you just kind of do it to your, maybe your taste or just, it doesn't work out equal for us because I've learned if you put too much of one, it's gonna be, you can't take it hardly. At least for me, I can't take the hot. <laughs> it's too much. But just work it out what you like. I mean, if you're all about <laughs> horseradish, maybe it's not a big deal. <coughs> But I think the horseradish killed us. It's like, it's, we're, we used it, but it was like, we'll be glad when this is gone so we can make new without so much horseradish. So when you say ginger, are you talking about the raw, everything? That's the raw? root, too. The root and the horseradish, how's yeah. that? That's a root, too. It's a, it kind of looks maybe like a parsnip kind of thing. It's a root. And you can buy it most places in a produce section. And it's fresh jalapenos. Uh-huh. Everything's fresh. And hot, the hotter, the better. Yes, ma'am. Did you say you can eat the solids? Yep. I have people that actually eat the stuff. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Now they Yeah. I I don't there again, the horseradish really I can't deal with that myself personally. It's kind of stringy mm -hmm. too. <laughs> but I, there's people that actually just eat the stuff. Okay. So wow. yeah.
if you don't mind it. <laughs> Make salsa. <laughs> and there's so many of these things, we, you know, playing around with things, but... Um, Why don't you delve a little bit into water? Yeah. Then you can talk for a half an hour. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't want to talk a half hour on water, but... Um, first of all, God has made water to be able to hold information. That's one of the, the coolest things as a homeopath I've learned, that water can hold information. So when we make homeopathics, we can put information energetically into water and it can hold it, it's not destroyed. And like when we talk about homeopathics or anybody that's come and I've given you maybe a bottle with energy in it, and when it goes down, you can add more water to it, tap it up, and that information in that first bottle becomes, is replicated into the new water. That's first. So that tells us our bodies, I don't, I don't know percentage, but mostly water. Our world atmosphere is mostly water. And I believe God as a creator knew the water was powerful and he put it everywhere. <laughs> so that's where we start. Um, we need water. We cannot survive without water. Um, water comes in many forms now. Um, unfortunately, most of our society has water systems. They bring the water in. They dump chemicals into them. Uh, they have toxins that were used. And what they're trying to do is kill the stuff that went through the first time so you can drink the same water again. I mean, that's basically what's happening. I hate to say that some people don't realize that, but that's what's happening. Water treatment plants they are trying to not only kill the stuff that's in there, but they're bring, trying to bring it up to the best water is 6.8 to 7.0 on a pH scale for our body. That's where our body should be. So if we're drinking that water, that should be good. The problem is the water wasn't that. They added chemicals, mainly lime, to get it to that point. So it's not even a true pH. It's been forced into that. Um, well water is pretty much good because hopefully it, it's come from the earth. Now again, we have problems because there's industry around us and uh, plants that have not, not even there anymore, but those, they were chemicals in the um, ground, now the water's filled with chemicals, the water table. Um, so what we're drinking, even from wells at times, have more chemicals, more pollutants, other things, so that's not good. So I say get your water tested. You can start off with simple ones. You can go to Home Depot. They have a pack that you can get a two-parter. Two you do it twice, maybe, and they'll give you bacteria. They give you metals. They'll give you nitrate. pH, nitrates, all kinds of things. And now you can be educated to find out what's good. If you find something that's nasty, like a bacteria, then you probably want to have it tested at a higher level that you can, you know, send it in and have it tested. And I don't have research or resources for all that, but they're out there. Um, knowing what's in your water, of course, if you have city water, you just depend on them to give you something. Um, the thing these days is there, our bodies are acidic. That's on that pH scale. Uh, it's from 0 to 14, and water can, if it's on the low end, or anything, not just water, but anything that's on the low end, 0, 2.5, all the way up to mid-range, 6.8, we consider acidic. Anything above that is alkaline. Our bodies are mostly acidic because of toxins, things we eat, things we drink, and I've said this before, you no know one should drink soda, pop, coke, whatever you want to call it. It's 2.5 on the scale. If you're putting it in your body, guess what? It's driving it down. I've seen illustrations where they took gallons of good water, they pour one capful of pop. Now, who drinks one capful? They drink, <laughs> you drink a glass of it. But one capful of soda pop will turn that whole big gallon, three gallon container acidic. It will change before your eyes. It will immediately go to 2.5. So soda is the worst thing. Coffee is in that realm of like, you know, I'm not saying all coffee Don't is bad, touch coffee. but coffee <laughs> is a sweet thing. <laughs> you need to buy yourself a condom machine and make your coffee with high alkaline water is what I say. But coffee is acidic too. It's not as bad as the palm, but it is. And it's, I mean, I tell people you should kind of know what foods are where too. 
because we should not only be eating acidic foods. And it's not always bad food, but they're acidic. If you're eating 80% of your diet from the low end, then your body's going to be acidic. You got to spread this out. So find out what's alkaline. Okay, this is not water, but it's part of this. <laughs> alkaline acidity. Um, but there's a big movement today. There's these machines. The first machine that I understand is I do have one of the machines. It's from Enagic. It's They're called Kongu Water. It's been in Japan for 30 years. A lot of Japanese people have it in their home. Uh, probably, I think, about 10, 15 years it came to this country. It's becoming popular, but this machine that you put on your counter, hook it up to your water, it filters your water. Now, I'm not going to say if you have really nasty city water that's going to fix the whole thing, because I don't think it can fix it yeah, by itself. Now, you might need some more filters in your house, some other filters along the way to help filter the water first. But what this does, it can take your water and it splits it because that water is going to be equal 14 whether there's some acidity or not. Water is going to be a combination of 14. But this machine actually can take your water and you can choose what you want. Now you don't want to drink acidic water. Anything below 7.0 would be acidic. Now our skin needs to be acidic. So it kills the bacteria, it kills things that come on our skin. But we don't put acidic water in our body. So you can choose on this machine, you can get 7.0, we call that clean water. That's if it's clean, it's neutral. You can also make 8.5, 9.0, and 9.5 water. That's the highest water you should technically drink. You can on this machine get 11.5, but that's more antiseptic. You can actually clean things with that, and it's good for that. And you can actually make acidic water too for skin, and they make a 2.5, which is very, uh, antimicrobial. We've used it for people that have actually MRSA and on the skin and we've used the 2.5 for that. Very acidic, kills microbes. But that's this machine and you can drink this. Now, I'm not going to tell you Then people that are in the market to sell these will say, you get this machine and you drink 9.5 every day and your body's going to be alkaline. That's not true. First of all, you could put yourself in crisis doing that, and I've had people do that as they come to me and say, but I've been drinking the 9.5. I'm like, yeah, and now your body's too alkaline. It's not alkaline across the board, but you've created an alkaline crisis. So we found people that have had other problems, so it's not about just drinking alkaline water either. <laughs> and that's a personal thing. It's muscle testing. It's a lot of things. But they do. It's powerful. It's a whole lot better than putting water in your body that came. Here's another one, buying water, bottles of water. People say, well, I only drink bottled water. First of all, you don't know where that water came from, and I don't care if it says came from the spring or not. Really? People lie. <laughs> it can come out of somebody's faucet and they've sold it to you. They can put that on the bottle. It's not against the law for them to do that. So, but if it's in a plastic bottle and it's been there for any time, it also has leached in those chemicals that the plastic bottle is made out of, and those are horrible. They are PCBs, they're all kind, I can't even tell you about whatever they are, but they're horrible, and you're putting those in your bottle. body. So I personally feel like if you have water with a, any kind of filter on, it's probably better than the bottled water, <laughs> unless it just tastes horrible and then you can't drink it. But, um, so you don't want to drink bottled water, and you want to have a filter. A filter you can go, everybody can go, I think, to Walmart or Home Depot, Lowe's, and get a canister filter and put this not under your sink, you want it on your house because you might be drinking filtered water, but when you take a shower and open up your pores and dump this the water on you that has all this chlorine, it's going in and it could sometimes be more harmful than what you're drinking. So you got to realize that some people think, well, I only drink good water. Well, that doesn't matter. Uh, so filter, canister filter, they have different kinds. Again, they tell you how to test. They tell you how to do that. And you put that on your intake water system, not under your sink, on the whole house. That's the easiest, at least some place to start. Uh, I personally, I don't think these reverse osmosis and Collagen and all these big systems that cost thousands of dollars. I don't know that they're really any better than doing some <coughs> of the simple things. Um, if you got poor water to drink, 
You know, again, it's not going to do everything for you, but how about a Brita, Brita filter? It's just a carbon filter that <coughs> takes some stuff out so the drinking water is better than what came out of your faucet. Pretty simple, about 15 bucks for a Brita filter. And don't wait two years to change the filter. I mean, people have come in with filters that are full of bacteria. Like, you got to change these things, you know, <laughs> whether it's on your house or the Brita filter. You got to write it on the calendar when you put it in, when you need to kind of change it. <laughs> they don't last forever. When they get filled up with toxins, they're full, and you're just putting, it's filtering the bad stuff out and so on and so So those are a few things. Um, water is a big thing. <laughs> and unfortunately, we need water, so that's the hardest thing. When you can't get good water, <coughs> you do. I don't know. Um, if you got friends. <laughs> Um, it's all, you know, even the so-called good stuff can be bad. A, a well can be bad because it's got junk in it. So there's no perfect thing. Um, I had probably the perfect thing. We lived in the National Forest, and my, I had a spring that was up on the top of a mountain, and it came 600 feet down and came into my house. <laughs> that was the, probably one of the best things, and I hated to live it, but that was in Pennsylvania. Um, and it tasted great, and it was cold all the time, and it was wonderful. But you don't get that most places. So um, do your research. Do what you can. Um, you know, it, it's just a hard thing. <laughs> what says the name of the one that you have? It's, uh, from, it's made by Enagic, and it's called Enagic, E-N-A-G-I-C. And it's, they call it Hongan water. Uh -huh. The problem with it, it's not a problem, it's a great machine and stuff. The problem is it's $4,000. But you buy it because, and not get something. <coughs> it's like an upline. Again, I think I said this last time. Any, you know, I understand it helps people to market that and helps them. But when you have an upline, they have to build in that money that somebody's going to make. So this machine is probably $2,000 over price. But what you do is, if you buy one, you automatically become a distributor. You don't have to mark, you don't have to have the machines, but basically, if you have a friend that's going to wants to buy one and you recommend it, you fill up paperwork, send it in. <coughs> the first machine you get a check for two hundred eighty dollars. The second machine you get two hundred eighty dollars check. The third machine that doubles. So then you're getting a five hundred dollar check, and you can you know it just multiplies. It's that's why it is. And that's why the machine costs four thousand dollars. If the machine is not four thousand dollars, <laughs> should not. But unfortunately, instead of just marketing it, let people buy it, they chose to do it that way. And you can't buy one. There has been a few people I know that went on eBay or went on Craigslist, and they found them. I had one person not too long ago found a brand new one in the box for twenty two hundred dollars. So it's worth trying to get it. And, um, and once again, I do tell people, with some of the things I have, I'm not saying that there's anything bad with anything, but this, this company was in Japan for 30 years. It's probably the Cadillac company, and I personally feel you get what you pay for. <laughs> there's a lot of imitations out there now. People, the ones that are out there in the masses now, have been, they bought one and they made their own, but most of the time they don't do the same as what the Cadillac did. Or, <laughs> I had one client who, who decided, well, I'm not going to spend $4,000, I'm going to go get a different one. He bought it, it didn't do what he wanted. We tested the water, it wasn't even as good, and he ended up buying the other one anyway. So <laughs> he didn't save any money. Um, but there, but again, do your research, you know, and if that's one. Same with my, like the beam ray that I talked about. The beam ray, there's other models out there, but I, I've looked into the background. So that's the one I want. My ionic foot bath, there's a lot of different ones out there. The one I have is the original that um, the man, went, he got it in Australia, he brought it home, tweaked it. He was the first one to have it, and the rest are, Cheaper models because what they're cheaper quality. What cheaper. brand is that? The one that I have. Yeah. It's a, made by Ion or a major a major difference, and it's called an Ion Cleanse. Is the brand. And that one too. I mean, you, 
All these things anybody can have. It's not like fancy. You can go, they have the foot bath, they have a, a it, like a home type of model that has basically one setting. It still works fine, it works great. There's a professional model that has <coughs> technically three to five settings. And it's just about the way it's set on positive, negative, positive, negative. And it's not really, if you bought one, but the so what they call solo, it's I think sells for nineteen hundred dollars. And um, the one I have is twenty nine three thousand dollars. And but you do have to buy new plates. The plate part, that's the metal thing that goes in the water, it does use up. Now you can use it it's anywhere from like twenty, twenty five uses before you have to new, new plates, but the plates are $70. So that you do have um, something you have to continue to buy. It's not like you get this. Same thing with the water machine. It has a filter in it. You get about 2,500 to 3,000 gallons with the filter. And then you have to change this filter. That's but the machine's supposed to last, who knows, they say guaranteed 15 to 20 years. Um, so everything. Usually, it's not just one time. <laughs> you have to buy things. But, but they're definitely, I mean, you get what you pay for. I hate to say that. But, but the upline thing, I, I get frustrated anytime I have a product or something that's upline because you're, you're throwing costs on top of it to just pay people money to do it. And most of us don't care about making money. <laughs> we just want the product. But we have to pay for the extra. Well, did that cover anything? Did you have any other questions about it? Okay. Yeah, water's a hard one because we can't live without it. I just find it very interesting that my alternative doctor, the homeopath in North Carolina, you or somebody else all have that same. The same one. Well, that's why I said I wouldn't have any other one after, you know, 30 years in Japan. I mean, they have the worst water in the world, <laughs> especially now. Mm -hmm. um, and people there, it's not really an option. People have it. It's like an appliance to them. Like we have refrigerators and microwaves. No, we don't have microwaves. No more. Throw your microwave in. <laughs> but uh, it's an appliance to them to have that on the water. Okay. Anything else? I don't know if we've covered everything, but <laughs> um, well, well, we'll go ahead and stop. It's eight thirty. Um, if you have any other personal questions you want to just address, we have, come up, feel free. We're not here to sell things. That's not my purpose. It's education. We do have things that if you would like to purchase them or if you would want to order a homeopathic kit we talked about, you're welcome to do that. To, uh, I have cards up here. If you'd like to take a card, my email address is on there. You can get um, me through email the easiest. Um, I am a practitioner. I do evaluations, and if you have any questions about that, feel free to email me or call about that. Um, or you could talk to anybody here. Quite a few people have seen me, so you might get information that way. It's more from them than me. <laughs> um, but if there are any other questions, feel free. I'll stay around and answer questions, or if you need anything.